Welcome to Ableton Live session on arrangement and automation. Today you are going to learn how to take your recorded clips and turn them into an arrangement. Some of the things that we're going to be discussing today is arrangement view, rulers, brace, loop. We're also going to talk about how to move your clips from session view into arrangement view, how to record the structure, how to add automation to your tracks to make them more interesting. So for those of you who are quite fresh into Ableton Live, Ableton Live offers you two views, session view and arrangement view. The session view is designed to come up with the ideas to, uh, to have your initial kind of dr drums and bass lines and melodies and um, also use the scenes on the right hand side to sort of jam the track and organize the first ideas for your arrangement. Whereas the arrangement view, which can be by using a tab, we can move between the session views and the arrangement view. So you will notice that being an arrangement view already, things are laid out a bit differently. Basically, the track is running horizontally, and, um, and that's very important when it comes to finishing an arrangement because you're looking at it from like point A to point B from your starting point of the track to a complete final uh, track. So uh, there's a ruler that runs underneath the arrangement in, in seconds and minutes, which helps you identify the total running time of your track, as well as helps you to understand what is the sort of timing for each of the sections. So now let's go back uh, by using a tab into our session view again. We're gonna talk about loop and brace. Now loop and brace, basically when we're using it in a uh, session view, it just loops to an infinite number, uh, the, all, the, all the clips that are going to be engaged. So if we're going to play this scene, scene one, Basically, you're just going to play this whole section all over, all over again if we have the loop on, okay? However, if we were to move into arrangement view, let's go back there. When we are using the loop and brace function, you can really closely work on each of the sections and loop specific moments of your track. So for example, your intro, your outro, your breaks, which help you to really get deeper into the editing and making your track more interesting. What is also important about loop and brace is that when we are recording uh, in a session view using the loop and brace, the clips that are gonna be recorded into the arrangement view are going to be looped from bar one to bar five. In case you would like to record a larger section, disengage it, and now you can record however you like, how long you like. So let's go back into our session view. And now we're going to discuss moving your clips into arrangement view from session view. There's three ways you could do that. First, it's by dragging clips, by just hovering over a, a clip, like bass, for example, we can literally drag a file or a clip into the arrangement view, into those uh, horizontal lines, and then drop it whatever we like within this arrangement view. So for example, bar 17. What is important here is that there's this great area. Now let me explain what happened. Ableton Live is designed in a way for you to play back either in a session view or the arrangement view. So if we would like to play back in the arrangement view, we need to press this orange button, which will then turn the colors back on. And now we are able to play this clip in the arrangement view. Let's undo this by command and C, and let's tap back into our session view. Let's talk about the second way of moving clips. Now that is by simply copying them. So if we hover over again to our bass sound, I press command and C, on the Apple, Control and C on the PC. We have just copied this base. We're gonna tap back into arrangement view and then we're gonna decide, okay, let's say I want this to be on the bar 21, Command and V or Control V on a PC and this has been copied into a desired space. 
Let's undo that. Let's go back. The third and probably the most common way to move the clips from uh, session view into arrangement view is literally just by recording it. If you want to record a scene um, from the session view into arrangement view, um, I want you to have a look here that in the transport window, there's something very important happening. The starting point position now is set at 21.4.1. Now that's definitely not the starting position of our loops. So we want to change that to 1.1.1 by pressing the square button twice. That moves to a starting position. Now that's so much better now. Let's say you don't want to record all the clips at once. You want to decide about the order of those clips being recorded. If you hold shift and if you press record, Ableton Live is now armed and is waiting for you to engage to any of those clips and record them into a session. But let's say we want to record the whole scene. What we need to do first is we need to play the scene, so sort of engage all the channels and stop it. Then you see the starting point has changed, so we're going to press the square again. Now we are ready to record into arrangement view. For that purpose of demonstration, I'm going to use a very simple device, Novation Launch Control, just for the mutes. You're welcome to use a push or push two or any other device that is going to let you to um, set some parameters and uh, MIDI map them to um, like faders, for example, or for filters and, and, and any other um, things that you find useful for making that arrangement. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute all the tracks. So for what you could see, I've just left the one, two, three tracks on, and those are my kicks and the bass, because I would like to start my recording with those three channels. It's still going to record everything else. However, these other channels that are not engaged now, they're going to be muted. Let's now record about two minutes or so. So again, you can see that there's a, both of the kicks and the bass line being recorded. We can tab just to see how this is being recorded into the arrangement view. There we go. Let's go back. Let's just add more sounds to this. So we're just going to add operator bass, for example. One, two, three, four. And a snare. Hi hats. Some more FM synths. Filter hi hats. Clap. Another hi hat. As well, we're going to record a pad in. We're going to bring the channel down. We're going to engage that track. We're going to brought the fader down, man. And now we're just going to record it in. by moving the fader. You could do this on a controller as well, but I'm just gonna do it manually on the computer. Just by bringing that in. One, two, three, and stop. Let's move now into arrangement view. As you could see, we have recorded a large portion, like a minute and a half. Again, this is the colors are faded, so we want to make sure that we now play back into the arrangement view. So we're going to press that orange box, and now the orange box is gone, and we have our arrangement. Um, what's also very important, you probably noticed in the middle of our recording some click clicks and glitches. Because we were working in the session view, it is very important to remember this. Uh, so now let's check the buffer size. So let's go back to our, into our preferences. If your buffer size was starting position, for example, 128, because you are recording a lot of information, uh, you see the CPU has gone up. So make sure when you are when you have stopped recording uh, external instruments or any MIDI uh, synths, and as well as uh, uh, any other signals like vocals for example as well uh, then you can go back into your preferences and now use the whole power of the computer for example to really bring that cpu lower and to avoid um, those glitches so 
let's go back into our arrangement and uh, there's something else I would like to introduce now which is called automation. Now automation is literally just marking certain spots throughout the song, mapping them um, and also identifying the starting endpoints of that automation. We can do all that stuff in Ableton Live because it allows us not only to record automation just as we did, but also draw automation and um, delete automation, for example, as well as uh, copy automation. So how do, we, how do we know there has been automation done into our track? Well, it's quite simple. When we hover over a track in the arrangement, you can see that Next to number four, our operator base, there's this red box, which identify there has been an automation recorded. Also, if we just scroll down to the pad, and remember we had two automations done because one was the mute on and off, and the second thing was the volume fade. You see that volume fade right here. So as you could see this lovely line, across, which is not very accurate, but I'm going to help you to actually uh, understand how you can fix it. So if you just go on the top of your session, right next to the keyboard icon, you have the pencil. If you use the pencil to draw on top of that automation, you can literally fix that line. But let's say you would just like a very simple, smooth line that's going from bottom to some kind of a level in decibels. If we just go into that volume that has been automated, you see that red button. If we just go on top of it and press control, you see that an icon pops in. If we just press on top of it, now we scroll it down to the function called delete automation. We can also use command and delete as a shortcut. Now this automation has been deleted. Let's go back. And now you can see this just a straight line. However, there's another automation that's being done. Remember the mute on and off. And we can turn that off just by going into a track setting speaker on and off. Just by pressing on top of those points, we literally have removed the automation. And now we can just move the track, you see, on and off. But I still would like to have that fade in. So let's just listen to where that fade would work best. So I could probably see already that 20, Exactly, bar 25, this would be a good point to start our fade. So let's mark that parameter. And let's say your track was much much more, uh, let's say processed with a lot more effects and filters. Uh, you would also be able to see that automation here and automate like filters and anything. So it's very powerful in that way. But let's say our volume starting point will be here. And then the second point will be moving past that point. The third point will sustain that volume and then there will be a drop, okay? So you can see we just have, just by points, we have identified the shape of the line. Now let's say that we can even fix this line a bit more accurately to, to have this a very kind of smooth fade in. And let's listen to this section. So now as we are listening to that section, we can decide, well, maybe I want this a bit louder. Maybe I want to, uh, for example, bring this down here. So that's how easy it is just to fix our automation and edit our automation. Another thing that I really would like to discuss today is editing your arrangement. As you already know, we have recorded a, a minute and a half of an arrangement. Now we could have easily also started this arrangement just straight in the arrangement view and just by moving clips or recording clips in this view. Uh, as some people may prefer use the arrangement view from the start. For example, if I work with a band on the production, uh, we like to work on a structure straight from the arrangement view, which allows us to have a bit more control on the section of the songs, like the intro, the bridges, the choruses, and things like that, okay? Let's say we would like to work on a break, which is going to create some interesting energy. Now remember that pad is coming on a bar 25. Now on bar 25, I like to create some change, and I'm going to create a break by, well, there's two things I could do. I could literally delete the beat or mute it, for example. So let's say if we're going to delete it, first of all, 
let's mark this space that we would like to delete. And by going backspace, we can delete it. Let's go back again. We can also do this with automation just by going to speaker on and off. So we don't have to delete the track. We can just literally mute it. And we, as you can see, the automation has been done. The little triangle has popped in. Let's go back a step more and a step more. But let's just say we would like to delete this whole thing like that backspace. So this will gives us the drop of the of the kick. Also, now we can decide, well, I would like this to be shortened as well. So I'm just by going on top of the track, we see those brackets opening and up. And now we can decide to shorten this uh, section as well and see how that. Okay, I want to do that more all the way to bar 33. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And that's going to be our break. I'm going to introduce another way of editing your arrangement, which is uh, called uh, duplicating time. So we could have easily duplicated the time here, for example. Let's just say we want to extend this break even further. We would need to find the starting position of what we would like to extend. So that would be bar 25, as well as bar 33 will be our ending. And now if we mark not just single track, but the whole section, and we use Command and D, and now our break has been much extended. What we can do now in this case, I'm going to teach you something interesting. I'm just going to copy a beat by using Command and C. So I'm just going to kind of drop like a DJ would do and introduce a beat at bar 33. Also, I'm going to introduce it at bar 35. And then at bar 37. And then at right at the end, I'm going to make a bit more of a build up with doubling the amount of the kick drum. Now you will see what happened now. There's a first kick, second kick, etc. And now the ending of it. Okay. I'm also going to uh, show you a cool little trick. Now, back in some uh, old school times uh, when reel to reel was very popular, uh, we used to cut the tape uh, using scissors and paste the, paste the tape to create some interesting effects like reverse. Uh, thank God right now we've got this lovely software Ableton Live which would let us do this instantly. Just have a look. We will copy a kick drum, copy that and paste it right before the kick comes in and then go inside the track and reverse the, the sound and reverse the second sound. Now we have just created a reverse effect. I hope you enjoyed today's session on arrangement and automation. This was an introduction to arrangement because there's a lot more to learn. There's a lot more to explore in Ableton Live using arrangement. It's a very powerful view that allows you to finish your tracks. So today we discussed the arrangement view. We have also talked talk about uh, the rulers, the brace and loop. Um, we also discussed how to move the clips from the session view into arrangement view, how to record the section, uh, build the structure, how to add automation to make your tracks more interesting and how to edit your arrangement. So I hope you enjoy the session and thank you.